you everybody. Hello. Coming at you out in the woods with Nick on the camera. Alright, so today is pretty Oops. cool. What? Hit the camera. Oh, okay. Today is pretty cool because I was digging around in the back of my shop up in the attic type area and I found a box full of gear I'd forgotten about. And one of it is one of my earliest, oldest homemade cook sets. Hanging cook set. It's so cool. And seeing it is weird because of the way I used to do things to compare to the way I do things now. So, first things first, what I'm going to do is take the backpack off and I'm going to show you what it is, what it looks like, and all that kind of good stuff. All right? All right. Anything you want to add, Nick? Nope. All right. Just ready for some gonna, coffee. That's right. We're going to have coffee and a banana nut muffin. All right. All right. You hear them crows, Nick? Yeah. I love the sound of crows. Mm hmm. All right, let's get this pack off here. Take a peek at what's inside. Let's see. How's this thing? Oh, one of my scraps came undone already. That or I forgot to put it back. All right, let's take a peek in here. See what we need and don't need. <clears throat> oh, somebody had asked what kind of pack this is one time. And it's uh, some kind of a foreign military pack. Maybe Austrian, maybe? I'm not sure. My buddy, uh, Oregon Mike, sent it to me. He uh, coated it with his special waterproof coat. <laughs> so anyway, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. All right. We'll need this. Let's roll this thing out right here. We got cordage, a funny looking hook, a neat little pack, and a saw. So let's put that over there. Let's open this up so I can have a place to sit everything down. Right here. All right. Now, what do we got in here? Water bottle. Got a pack. Right here. And <clears throat> this is the cook set. Oh, there's my Colorado Bushcraft sitting pad. I'll sit on that here in a little while. Now, this is the pack right here, okay? Uh, I recently made this cover for it because this, believe it or not, this was in a brown paper bag. <laughs> That's how I used to carry this kind of stuff. So, I figured I'd make a new bag out of it. Now, this right here is some kind of a kettle that it looks like it's never been used before. And the top is just bizarre because instead of having a lid, it's got like a cup in it. Now, I don't know why. Hmm. Let's pull this out. There you go. Now, the way this thing works, this is made out of, look, I already got black all over my hands. Let's throw that bag in there. I got a couple of plates. I got a mixing bowl. This I just put in recently. This is some sort of a mini bunt cake pan because that way you ain't got to worry about the center not getting done because a lot of times when you make one big giant muffin the center won't get done but the edges will this i don't know what this is some of you may recognize this but i don't know what it is all these cutouts and things but that seems to work perfectly for this now if you'll look at this it's got the little pegs on the side and that is part of an old Boy Scout kit. Same thing with this one. This has got the little loop on the side and the little pegs. Now this is the fire pan, but it can be cleaned out and used for other things. Now, <clears throat> this little pack here, I recently made this neat little bag, and my bags are getting a lot better. <laughs> so, it's got a little Fastex buckle. Let's take a look and see what's inside. All right. I have a couple of bent up pieces right here that are bent up and they've got some slots in them. Okay, And I wrote on them the way I took it apart, top and side. All right. So hopefully I can figure out how this thing will go together. And then this is a stainless steel ring with two hooks like this. Just like that. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do, and I, this was part of it. This was back part of before when I didn't use much cordage and I would just hang this over a log. So I'm going to put all this together real quick so that I can see how this works. So <clears throat> I can get a height on it. 
So now, the fire is on the top. This is a fire pan. So this is top and side. Can you see that good on camera, Nick? Yeah. All right, now that thing is bent to fit like that. See, it goes to the outside. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the other one, top inside. You set it on the peg and push it up, just like that. Mm -hmm. All right, now this part down here, you put this on and push it down. I see, like I said, this is this is back before the years of Goodwill. This was back during the years of the the uh, the old. You had to use like a either the old Boy Scout sets or the old cookware sets. And so now you grab this. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I think this goes on the inside, and this goes on the inside. Come on. Might have bending a little bit. That should go on there. It's always that portion of the video that can take some Jeopardy music with it. Do, 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 do. Like I say, this is when I was younger and I wasn't quite as refined. Okay, there we go. Now your bottom came off. Yeah, the bottom came off. I had to make sure I had to do something with that. I don't think I had it pulled up on there enough. All right, now, here's the thing, okay? Now, what we do is, remember I said the act of baking is surrounding something in hot air, okay? Well, you bake here, and what you do is you have this hanging, and the fire's on the bottom, and then you have a fire on the top, okay? Now, the other use of this, this is the way I always use this thing, but the other thing you could <clears throat> use this for is if you're in the wetlands or swamps or from a canoe, you can swap these and have the fire in the bottom and cook from the top. That way you don't have to have a ground fire. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to try to use this instead of some sort of cordage. And I think this is going to need to be about as high as my pocket. All right. So what we're going to do for now, let's hang this from this tree right here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we are going to get a, let's see, we're, we're going to go get a log over here and we're going to tie it to a tree about this high. All right? Make sense? Yep. All right, All right. I got a we'll decent cut. looking log sitting here on the ground. Oh, and there's some uh, decent looking logs back there behind you forming something. What would you say that is? You know, I noticed that, and that's why I picked this location. Uh, <clears throat> I got some friends that have been telling me about uh, certain signs to look for in the woods. And uh, what is that? Is that something that somebody had built where he started a shelter, or is it something else? I promise you that's not a natural phenomenon. And I don't know, you would think that if it was a teepee, that it would have wood all the way around. And... Uh, but it's not. It's all in one direction. So, that's pretty interesting. And the logs ain't broken off. They're, I mean, they're not sawed off. They're broken off. Let me set the camera real quick. Let me set it real quick. I want, I want to do something real quick right here. I want to go right up there at the top. You see that one? It looks like it was twisted off. Hmm. It wouldn't cut off. So, yeah, here you go. First off, before right. we get started, I'm going to get the smaller cordage. Because that's right there, I don't, I don't know if I need that bigger cordage. Well, I don't know, maybe. Pull this out. All right, I got some cold stuff in this little bag. Martha White banana nut mix. Mm -mm. Then we got two cups. Oh, it's paracord. I thought that is that quarter inch rope. And then a multi tool. And then I got a little goodie pack that I'm going to show everybody. So, enough of that. Let's use this. This is that, uh, 
I can't remember what diameter this rope is. All right, so what we're going to do is right here at about pocket high, right here. Let's wrap that around. Now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to taper it. I'm going to taper where this log is <clears throat> in case I need a different height for it. All right, then I'm going to wrap around the tree. Now, usually I have two pieces of cordage, but I'm just going to use one piece right here. I'm going to wrap around here, and then I'm going to come up here. Let's go to this end now. here then I'm gonna come down to about pocket high and then I'm gonna set this log on top like that yeah see it's tapered that's what I want Wrap that baby around there. But then that should be good to go right there. All right. Look good, Nick. Yeah. Now, if I was going to be cooking in the top container, I would want to debark this, but the fire is going to be in the top container. So let's see how well our judgment is. Pretty level. Yeah, I think that'll be about right. I think that'll be good. All right, let's see. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do, let's put a couple of pieces of wood there after I've cleared out a path. Clear us out a little spot here. Now see the ground is soaking wet here. So that's a good deal. All I gotta do is get the top layer away from everything and get us down to some mud. And we're gonna be here, we're gonna watch it so. I'm gonna put some wood right there. We got some more wood cut there and we may have to cut a little bit more. All right, so let's pull this pan out. And now we're gonna mix up our uh, our mix. Yes, I'm gonna open this up before my hands get any dirtier. Cause I'm gonna take some butter. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, butter. <laughs> and I'm gonna butter up the pan real good so that it won't stick. I just love when uh, you're just sitting here minding your own business and a mosquito comes buzzing by your ear. I guess. I don't know. I, I didn't know there was going to be that many mosquitoes out here because as early as it was. All right, so I'm going to rub this around. All around on the inside of the pan while the pan is still cold. Because it, it tends to stay there a little better when the pan's cold. Now hopefully this will act like a release agent to get our muffin out. All right, now that I made a mess out of that, I really need a baggie to put it in. Here, I'm going to wrap it up in that paper towel right there. All right, that'll work. So now what we do is take half a cup of milk that I put in here. I have a frozen Gatorade bottle here with ice. It's what kept it cold. And the inside of this pack here is a, a Mylar. It's a real small cold pack. So what we're going to do... Now I know somebody's going to complain somewhere. They're going to say you should put the milk in first, and then somebody's going to say you should put this in first. So it says combine muffin mix and milk in a small mixing bowl. All right, it said muffin mix first, so I'm going to put it in first. <laughs> 
pull this off here. All right, banana nut. Hope this bowl's big enough. We're gonna dump that in there. All right. Mm -hmm. Fits pretty good. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's see. All right, let's put that right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the milk. What I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna make a hole in the middle. Now, I used to make the mistake years ago of um, well, not really the mistake, but I would put it in a bag and mush it around and shake it up. And everybody tells me that you're supposed to stir it very gently so until the lumps are gone, that you're not really supposed to beat it and, and smash it and shake it and pressurize it and all that kind of stuff. So, let's see. Now, once this gets started, we're going to have to probably go get some more firewood. Say I'm stirring as gently as possible. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Right. I'm going to stir this as gently as possible. Now, them, them Martha White uh, mixes, they got banana nut and cinnamon apple and blueberry and raspberry and strawberry and wild berry and uh, poppy seed. They got all different kinds of flavors. These things are cheap and they make me very happy. <laughs> all right, I think I got... I think I got everything out of that. All right, so let's pour it in now. Lay that over there. How's that? Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's get the last out of it. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Now, see, the reason that I like this, look at that. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> what right there. That's what they make leaves for. Now, I have discovered in the past, and I remembered this. It's amazing. There's a lot of things that I don't remember, but this I definitely remember. That if you set this thing on the bottom, the bottom would burn before the top got done. So, that's the reason for this stupid looking little thing, is that you put it in there to raise it up off the bottom. You're gonna have a hot air space on the bottom, and then you're putting it closer to the top. Just like that. I don't know, it's wanting to tilt. That ain't good. No, it ain't good. So you gotta kinda pay attention to it. Maybe you shove a little stick in the grooves on the side. Well, it may not like be. I got one sitting there. Enough. Let me move that. See, once this solidifies, it's not as bad. Let me pull down one of it a little bit. There you go. Because once you put it in there, you don't want to touch it. All right, there. Now, I don't want to touch that. So, what we're going to do now... All right. So, let's do this. I actually, heck, use that as a chopping block. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, some of the smaller stuff I'm going to break. Let's use that like that. All right, now, look in here. See this? This is Mad Dog Survival. A friend of mine mm -hmm. on YouTube. And he sent me some goodies. He didn't send all this stuff, but he sent some, some other stuff. But what I brought is he made me a ferro rod striker. It's out of ceramic. See that green color? Yeah. I've never seen one out of ceramic. I've only seen them out of high-speed steel. And then this is an octagon ferro rod from Nathan 4071. And he made the handle. Handle may be Coca Bola. Not real sure. And then this is from a company called Fatwood Fire Steels. And if I remember right, the guy that owns it is named Jeff. He makes fire steels and shavings. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try out some of these sticky shavings right here. 
we're going to lay some of these across the top just like that try not to waste any all right see this is great for if you don't have access for for fat steel or if you just want to buy some that's already carved up and ready to go as a fire starter so let's try that now let's try let's see how this does on this octo octagonal fire steel right nathan 4071 and mad dog survival all right this is a brand new one oh it looks good to me i guess i'll set it on there i don't want to knock these everywhere there you go yep. Yep. all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer this over to here and then I'm going to try not to mess around too much, and I'm going to put a bunch of small sticks on here. We'll try to get that fire going that way. And then we'll put the larger ones on. Nothing better than a campfire in the summer heat. <laughs> That's right. But you got to do what you got to do to cook. As soon as that gets going, I'll show you. I'm going to get the bottom going real good before I get the top going. And it looks like we have success. Now I'm going to save some of this here for the top. Because we want a roaring fire on the top. Now, <clears throat> when I have a fire in the top, that's part of the reason for all this stainless steel here and the stainless steel hook. Because... The flames would have to reach up this high before it affected it. I'll go ahead and put on a few more smaller pieces here. So that I can ensure this fire will be going well. That's <laughs> funny. I actually brought a bag of shavings over there, and uh, I'm going to tell you something about that here in a minute. Now, I think that right there is going to get going. I'm going to save these for the top. put these here. I think it's going plenty good enough now. You hear that popping sound? Mm, not really. Oh, I, I could hear it over here a minute ago. I'll put this down here. Did you hear it popping then? Mm, yeah, I think so. That'll be for up on the top. These little short pieces tend to fit in better up on the top. Got a few of them. Use that on the top. All right, let's go ahead and put some of this stuff here on the bottom. I wonder if I'll split it. Still cracking. All right. Now we should be going here pretty soon. All right. It's starting to go fairly well. It's catching on pretty good, so I feel pretty confident with that now. So <clears throat> I actually brought a bag of shavings. Now, whenever you're sharpening your knives, I will keep a, a, I keep a stick around for testing to see how, how well it feathers. And so over a period of time, they build up. And so I just, I carry them with me. <laughs> so, now this may be, this may be very helpful in starting the top of this fire because, honestly, I don't want to touch this too much until this starts to solidify. 
because I don't want it to tilt one way or another. Now, I don't remember that thing tilting in the past, but it does. Oh, now this, I want to show you real quick right here while that thing's getting going. This, I inspired uh, the guy from Colorado Bushcraft to start making Cordura neck sheets. And he experimented, and he made a few, and I don't know if he's going to make any more. And he may be sold out. He made a couple to sell, and then he might have removed them from his site. But it's pretty cool because uh, he did a really nice job on it. So, anyway, like I said, I don't think they're on the site right now, but with enough push and enthusiasm, if you wanted one, he may make one. But it's got a plastic liner in it. All right. And this contains the newest edition from Hillbilly Knife Company. And I used to know the name of this. This knife was either named after a creek or mountain. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, so enough about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that piece of wood that I had, which just disappeared in front of my eyes. Where did I put it? There it is. It was laying on my leg. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to feather this a little bit so I can transfer that flame to up to here. Now see that? The flames are engulfing the whole outside. Yeah, I think it's trying to reach it itself. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Tilt the top pan a little bit, and there you go. Yep. All right, that ought to be enough to catch a flame. So what I'm going to do, let's catch that on fire. Catch it on fire, turn it upside down, and then throw it in. All right, so now I'm going to put a few sticks in here just for insurance so that I've got a bed of, a little bed of sticks and twigs and things. Let the small material get the flames going. Yeah, see, now them flames, they're just, that's another reason for this, this pan here to be much smaller than this pan is because of the flames licking up around it. Now, if I had something like my reds rings i could adjust this up away from the fire but i don't have to because i've got this spaced off the bottom so i have no worries of it burning and the beauty of this is you can see baking before your eyes you can watch this bake that is just that is the beauty of it mm -hmm. or burn depending on how large the bottom fire is that's true hopefully it won't burn Oop, that's blurry. Blurry? What happened? I was zooming. Oh, okay. All right, so now let's put in a couple of little bitty pieces of wood in here. Oh. Ah. No mix glove time. Starting to get a little hot. I love these Nomex gloves for messing with fire. You cannot beat them for dealing with fire. All right, so I think we're we're good to go now. Now what I'm going to do? Let's let's drag this out a little bit more because we're going to create another small fire over here for our coffee pot. I'm going to try to get some glowing coals over here of some kind. Alright. Put a couple pieces of wood here and here. There's a stick over here that's on fire that's uh, not really supporting anything so you can just slip that off. Which stick? Uh, that? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm not touching that fire. Now, I do it need to... It doesn't look like it's anything, though. Look at that. Fire. It's it tilting on its own? Yeah, it was tilting on its own, so that's good. All right, now let's uh, take... Let's do this. Wait a minute. That's too big. Let's put this in the middle. Pull this back out. No, let's do this.
I need to get some smaller pieces. Let's do this. All right, we're gonna let that die down for a minute. I'm gonna put a couple more small pieces in here. And then that is done. We're gonna leave that just like it is. All right, look, I found a musky dime out in the middle of nowhere. How about that? Yeah, so there must be musky dimes nearby. Let's see. I think I'm going to feather both sides. Now, see it's starting to rise. See that? Yeah. Now, I really should have brought another pot, a hanging pot, but I didn't, and I should have. I definitely should have. Because I've got a thing overhead, and I could have hung it from right here, but I don't know. I just I wanted to bring this unusual-looking teapot because it was in the same box as the other one. Hopefully it won't take too long to get this fire going and get the coffee on. Let's see. Get some more here. Hey, that seems to be going on its own. Yeah, this thing's going to be starting up okay. Let's see if we can baton one with this. There we go. And once this fire gets going, we'll hopefully it'll just collapse. Yeah, kind of like the top one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the top one is not that important. Well, it is if it reaches your log up there. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it will. That was the reasoning behind the metal hook. See that thing rising? Mm -hmm. Look at that thing rising. See how much taller it is now? Yeah. All right, now we just pretty much white. Put another little one on here. That's starting to brown up. Nick, the coffee's going to be late. Mmm. That ain't good. No, no. All right. Let's see what we can do about this. Let's fill it up. This handle appears to be a bake light. I think it can handle the heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over here near this until that fire collapses and then I'll set it on it. Uh-huh. 
and we're starting to brown up here real good even on the top so that tells me I don't think we need much more fire on the top I don't think no I don't need no more fire on the top all right let's let this die down and then we'll go from there good enough that I can knock it down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of knock this down a little bit like this and put a few more sticks on here uh -huh. like that. And then I'm going to precarious teeter-totter this on top of it. And hopefully it won't fall over. See, this is why I like grills. And I like things hanging. And that's probably why this tea kettle was in that box. Because I just, I don't like sitting things in fires. But this will have to do. Matter of fact, is the extra insurance. Let's do this. Pick this off. Now that's not quite getting brown enough over there. So let's look. I'm going to go ahead and throw in another one right here. For insurance. Because the top's just not getting brown enough for me. How about that? Yeah. Now when we see steam coming out of the spout there, we'll be good to go. So, pretty much I'm thinking there's not much more that we can do here. Other than just sit here and wait for that to brown up. And wait for that to start steaming. All right. Sounds good. All righty. Hope that handle doesn't melt. Well, the handle is an old material from back in the 60s called Bakelite. And it's made for, uh, it's uh, made for these type of things. These hooks that I was showing. It's because as the fire dies down, these hooks were a part of the kit too. And what you can do is once this solidifies, there's no danger of it tilting over. What you want to do is you can use a hook to lower it down some closer to the fire. And see, as that dies down even more, I'll add another hook to it. In the meantime, you can just put it right there. That way, this is all stainless steel. You don't have any cordage for if this fire here gets out of hand. Nifty. Yeah. All right, now I'm starting to see steam come out. So I'm going to put, I think what we're going to do now, ooh, big fire, get out of here. What? I think what we're going to do, I'm seeing some steam come out. What I want to do now is I want to look inside here. Oh yeah, that's plenty. See the bubbles in there? Alright, so we're going to set this here pretty close to the fire. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these Cujo packs. Cujo. Cujo, not Cujo. Cujo was a killer dog. That's nice. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this stupid cardboard here. And we're just going to use it like a tea bag. There you go. Should I put both of them in? Uh, that's up to you, remember? I think. Aren't they both flavored? Well, let's see. This says base camp blend. That says oak chocolate and honey, and this says nutty chocolate berry. Uh, so I think they'll I think they'll be alright. Let me see here a minute. Hmm. I'm gonna put both in there because if I remember right, right below that line is like four cups of coffee. When you're talking about these cups. See, I'm not even going to fool with this stupid cardboard stuff. And there's a lot of coffee in these little bags. 
So, let's just do that. Now my guess is, my guess is as soon as that, as soon as, uh, as soon as that muffin's done, this coffee's going to be ready. I think. I don't think that browned anymore. Well, I'm going to move this back over here to make sure it stays done. Bottom's probably off. pretty done. I don't know. It takes a while. It might actually need it to have been closer. Let me see what the heat is. Oh, it's plenty hot in there. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Nick. Let's do this. For the, for the last three or four minutes, let's do this. Let me show you something. I just remembered something that I used to do. Let's take this. Nah, that'll tilt. We can't do that. I need something to uh, lift it up a little bit. Mm. I would put small sticks, but they'd catch on fire. I wonder if I could baton these down some more. Let's try that. It's a pretty straight stick over here. Well, let's try this. That may work. Get some of that excessive weight off of it. Let's try this. Put that stick there. And this stick here. And let's see if we can put it in there. How about that? Now we're going to brown on the top. How about that? that better? Sure. There's some coals over here. Stoke the fire a little bit. Yeah, that ought to brown up real good right there. Now let's take a peek here. Oh, let's see. Take a peek here. See how this is doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's turning nice and dark. Yeah. Nick, that is gonna be some delicious coffee right there. Can you see the color? Yeah. Alright. Sit that back on. Now when that top browns up real good, we're going to be ready to eat. That's starting to brown up a little bit, and I'm starting to see it's kind of pulling away from the side, so that leads me to thinking it is getting almost done. All so, right. All right. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and pour the coffee. Now look at that. Mm -hmm. That is the perfect color, Nick, for drinking it black with no creamer, no sugar. It's got a red color to it. Yeah, it does. It's that amazing. might be the fire reflecting off of it, but... I know it kind of had a red tint to it. Mostly it had a gold look to it. Hmm. Alright. You ready for me to take it off and take a peek? Yeah, if you were ready. I guess. Let's take a look. And then we'll move the camera around so that we can have our reaction while we eat it. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Okay. Let me move this over here. Oh yeah, it's pulling away from the sides beautifully. Come on. 
Oh yeah, Nick, that is that is a delicious gummy done. Gummy, gummy, yummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pine straw. Bonus. That is so perfect. Fluffy. Fluffy. Mmm, fluffy. Mmm. Alright, let's get you the piece there. Mmm. Actually not burned. No, not burned. Perfect and gummy and delicious. Alright, I'm going to give you the better piece. Thanks. The piece with the less pine straw and less falling apart. That's okay. You can include some pine straw. Wait a minute. Don't touch. <laughs> I want to move the camera so that they can see us eating. Come on. Let me just get a little try. No. All right. Let me just, let me let's, just move the, let's move the camera and then we'll be good to go, okay? All right. Now, this is absolutely, positively, this is perfectly done. This is, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, incredible. Because normally, I will get the top a little bit browner, but I didn't this time. Mm. <laughs> that is a gummy, gooey, well, it's not really gooey, it's delicious. Yeah. Mmm. So perfect. Do that setup there. Just like that with that little space between the bottom. And for once, the bottom of something we cook on here is actually not burned. <laughs> that's true, because I had to, you know, that's, yeah, that spacer works great, because if this would have been sitting straight on the bottom, the bottom would have been burned. Now, the bottom did turn as brown as the sides, but I think that had something to do with the butter. But as far as it coming out, it was absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. There's one. Woo! Nick, that coffee's hot, but it's perfect. <laughs> oh! Got him! Get! 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 It ain't winter yet. <laughs> All right, let me I knew this. one of them would come over here. <laughs> I know. As long as it ain't a black widow, though. Mm. All right, take a peek at this That's here. Awesome. Now, there is the side, and there is the bottom. It is a... And there's the other side. It's just a delicious buttery crust and then the top just is lightly brown and the inside there's no gummy gooey it is absolute perfection mm -hmm. i get first on the coffee though all Let's right try it ready. it may be too hot i could just put my face near it i think it's too hot <laughs> all right and i had it even the cup's too hot. Is it? All right. Okay. We'll let it sit for a that's, minute. That's got a bit on it. We'll let it sit for a minute. Those are meant for like one cup, I guess. But these are kind of small cups. But, you know, I put two in there. But, you know, de definitely dark enough. So let's try it. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Finally cooled off just a little bit. Oh, all right. Just cool a little bit. Yeah, this is cool enough I can touch it. All right, anything you want to add, Nick, before we go? Mm. Just, uh, I think we should cook everything like this. It works good. Like I said, on this, at the time we've done things on this channel, I think this is the first cooking video where the bottom of something we cooked is not burned. <laughs> it is absolutely perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. Guess we gotta try the uh, gigantic biscuit again. Yeah, we can try it with this thing. That'd be great. I, little... think the, I think half of that biscuit was stuck to the bottom of the pan. <clears throat> it was. Maybe the butter trick would have helped. I don't know. Anyway, anything you wanna add, Nick, before we let them go? Nothing else. All right. So we hope you had fun. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, no telling what we'll do next. Uh, I love my old school gear. Brings back a lot of memories, especially now that I know how to use it. Mm. <laughs> so we shall see you in the next one. See you later. I'm amazed.